all in power. It's about connecting emotionally with another person and surrendering. With you. I, I but, but in fact, you, you can't have you can't have sadomasochism without intimacy. And arguably, some people feel that it's it's that dynamic is the most intimate. People who are part of the bondage and dominance and even community divorce, feel Mel, it, it's the most. I intimate. love you. I love you. I hate you. I hate you. I mean, it's a two-sided coin. It's sado and it's masochistic on both sides. Okay. What. Um, what influence does age play in sexual drive? And I'm not asking an obvious question here. I don't mean necessarily that sex drive might diminish with age. My lay theory is that as men and women get older, we kind of get more like each other. You think that's true or not? More like each other. More like each way. other. And that there's more of a polar opposite or disparity with younger men and women. And as we age, men and women sort of become more like each Genetically, other. Genetically, biologically. You're talking biologically. About. No, I'm talking about, not even biologically, I'm just talking about as people in terms of Personalities. No, no one agrees with that. I, I do. I, I think you, you're, you're less. You're, you're less of a sexual being in at some level. I think even on a hormonal level, I, I think there tends to be a streamlining of gender as, as people get older. I think. I think in youth, people are very different. And if you go to nursing homes, men and women don't seem quite as different. Well, I, I can certainly see that. I, there's a story about a nursing home resident in Florida with the massive erection who walks around the halls with it. So I don't know how different it gets. Uh. No, I, mean, I, I wasn't necessarily saying sex drive dim obviously. diminishes. I'm just saying that we, personality-wise, we may get more like each other. You don't Do think you think so? so? You think uh, that as you get theory. older, you're going to get a lot more like me? Mm, okay. I thought maybe so, you'd no. get more like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want, no. Do you agree with that? I, 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 I think there's kind of like a blending, certainly, of you know that happens within relationships because you're spending so much time together, but I don't know if you end up to be the same People. So how does your approach to helping people come to you, mm -hmm. both of you, with problems and issues and concerns, okay, and they may be different, and I want you to have a chance to talk about this because this is what you do for mm -hmm. your living. How does your approach differ in terms of helping men and women cope with sexual issues? It really depends which, which issue you're talking about because they're all, they're all very different, whether you're trying to treat someone who is suffering from a lack of desire or you're treating someone who is not able to orgasm or someone who's dealing with pain. Um, all of those issues are going to be very different. I think for women, uh, we have to kind of go back and do a re-education for some of them, you know, to kind of understand their bodies more and understand um, real information about sex as opposed to some of the myths that you hear on the television. One example of that is probably the biggest example that I talk about is women orgasming during intercourse. I think everyone kind of assumes that if you're going to have this, you know, wonderful sex session that both people are going to have an orgasm during intercourse. And for women, it's very, very difficult. Very rare. You have about 30 to 40 percent of women who orgasm during intercourse. Only 30 to 40 percent. Yeah, but here's what I'm having a difficult time Do you mostly time treat women or men? I mostly treat women, but I do treat men as well, um, but not at the medical center. Right, but here's what I'm having a difficult time. I'm, I'm listening sure. to you. I hear what you're saying. I'm having a difficult time understanding in that in a culture that is highly sexual, with sexual images everywhere that women don't understand about their own bodies? I mean, really, yeah. I have to explain well, that That's to really the, the, the dichotomy uh, and the irony of American culture, is that we're selling and pushing sex all the time, and in some ways, we're the, in many ways, we're one of the most sexually repressed countries in the world. Absolutely. And it really comes from the, really the legacy of the Puritans, mm -hmm. but sex sells. And if it sells, sell it. Sex and violence, as opposed to other places in the world where people are gentler and kinder and they're not selling toothpaste to seven-year-olds by telling them that they'll be sexy when they smile, which we do in our society. Mm -hmm. Well, so how do you account for the dichotomy between a culture that's saturated with sexual messages and yet very puritanical in some of our yeah. attitudes? Well, I think I think s selling sex is is puritanical in that it's industrious, and puritanical <laughs> culture is industrious. And if sex sells, then use it. At the same time, it's Never sort of frowned upon privately because there's a legacy of shame. I mean, in, in life, you're if you you know to the degree that you're sexual, you're you're being an animal and the puritans were all about about not being an animal they were about being more of a god humans are are, are, in, are half animal and half god we're animals and that we get sick we get old we die and we're gods and that we have the, the capacity for vision and insight and to the puritans credit they wanted to focus on that part but they did they were extreme and they were extreme to the point of, of denying the animal so I think that's I think that's where the dichotomy pl plays itself out. It's only in the last out. 80 years, so that we've left God and replaced God with love. American culture, Western culture has replaced God with love in all our music, 
in most of our literature and most of our dialogue, if you take a look at it historically. It, once upon a time, as you said, it was to be closer to God and better. Well, there's as, more, there's as much or more religiosity now than there ever was. But the personal replacement. You don't hear songs about God. You hear songs about love. Turn on you any do, radio. You do think that, you do really believe that intimacy comes easier for women to find than for men. Yeah? You Look agree at with guys that? on a baseball team. I think they're extremely intimate. Oh, Look do you know at what I'm talking about? I'm talking about heterosexual intimacy. Come on. You think it's easier for a woman it, to get that than for it, a man? It's, it's easier for women to, to... To find it, to get it. To, to yes? practice it. It's easier for women to, to embrace mm -hmm. it. I'm asking whether it's easier for a woman to find it and get it, no? You find know, it and get, get it. it? What does no, that mean? No, it's harder. Hard. Well, it depends on who her partner is, which what, is why we're looking for the dishwasher. There, there's an old <laughs> adage There's an old adage that says men, men use love to get sex and women use sex to get love. And I think there's a lot of truth right. to that. Right, well, let me ask this, of Shannon, because we only have a couple of minutes left. I, one of the things in the article in the New York Times that really interested me was this disconnect in women's mind and body. That kept coming up. That mm -hmm. women, that while men sort of had a greater, con the men knew what there was, some, may, maybe in some ways men's sexuality is simpler, but that men knew basically what they wanted from their bodies, and that women would say one thing, their bodies would say, do something else. That theme kept repeating, this disconnect within women between mind and body. Is that something you've seen in your work? Or? Um, yeah, sometimes. I mean, we have some women who, um, uh, one of the women that I'm thinking of, uh, she was having difficulty with orgasm, and I was going through a series of you know questions, do you masturbating? Do you watch any pornography or read any erotica? And she kind of laughs. She watches porn, but she feels terrible about it. So she'll put it on for a little bit and then turn it immediately off. She's very likely to have an orgasm this way, and I think she knows that. I think she deep down she really knows that. But what she kind of you know hears, and and I think she's afraid of what people would even think. I mean, even telling me, she put her head down like, oh my gosh, how she how she could watch porn, and I'm you know making that, I'm normalizing that. That if you're okay with that, and that's something that can help you. You know, continue to do that. But that just ties so nicely into what Dave said. We're such a shame-based society that a woman's not allowed to watch pornography. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's, it's, it's a shame that she has to watch pornography to reach erection and can't, I'm sorry, reach orgasm. Mm -hmm. But again, we are a shame-based society. And, and how do you account? This is where we started the show. This is how we're going to end the show. Is How do you account for the fact that women, <coughs> particularly women with a high sex drive, seem to have more sexual attraction for same sex than men with a high sex drive. What is the answer to that? I just think that having a, a larger sex drive and even just being able to understand and saying, you know what, this is what I want. I'm a sexual person. I'm a sexual being. I'm okay with that. And they embrace that. I think it leaves them open to um, just being open to different sexual so practices. Think, it's not that women, it's that actually that men are, more, you would suggest, more in denial about their own uh, um, sexual inclinations, that men are more limited? Than I wouldn't say that. I think that definitely our society gives women a little bit more leeway, especially when you're talking about the, the homosexuality. Absolutely. Especially Let's that part. Lesbianism is way popular, and homosexuality is considered weak and, and shameful and not a good thing. So it's not that women are not inherently heterosexual, but maybe in your mind that they they have freedom to express. We have more. a little more freedom okay. with that. We're, we have to. We just sort of have to leave it here because we're out of time. I wish we had more time. Maybe we'll do this again, but we're done for today. I just have time to thank our panelists, Dr. Shannon Bertha, thank you, Dave Bihar, and our very own Paula Young. Uh, Thank you for watching our show for Men's Net. This is Mel Fight. See you next time. Never ever heard that. Sir.